Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel, and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. I would really appreciate it, and I promise to update daily. If you like this watch, you can see it, and you can purchase it on our website, thewatchbox.com. And today, we are discussing the Cadillac of moon watches. And yes, it is a moon watch. This is the Omega Speedmaster Professional Moon Watch Moon Phase Chronograph Aventurine, a timepiece originally launched at Basel 2010 and rarely seen. When it is, it's generally in its less costly strap-borne iteration. This is the first I've seen since 2010 on the factory bracelet. A rare watch in any configuration, the star is that dial, but the case is an impressively vast canvas to lay it out. 44.25 millimeters in diameter from 9 to 3, not including the crown shear guards. The watch is easy to wear on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist because it's only 50 millimeters lug to lug. If you include the solid end links, it's a bit broader at 53.8, but it's thinner than you might expect for a complicated chronograph. 14.5 millimeters, it will fit underneath a jacket cuff. The lug spacing is 21 millimeters, and even if you want to put it on a strap, get it on the bracelet. It would be more expensive to add later, and it preserves resale value should you ever want to move on. But the bracelet is a wonderful piece to fit. 21 millimeters, it's junction at the case, and it keeps the watch planted on the wrist. It's a three-link design, but with a continuously rounded profile, it doesn't seem derivative of the industry-dominant three-link Rolex Oyster. This is its own thing. A handsome combination of satin finish and polished accents. You can see it's polished on its outer facing with individual removable links fixed by screws. You will note big gaps on the underside to avoid pinching skin, pulling hair, or trapping wrist heat. And a very solid clasp, machine from the solid, single swing arm, twin trigger release, and handsome attention to detail. You can see that fine polished bevel on the flanks as well as the polished triggers themselves, absolutely secure when closed. You recognize the crisp action from the Seamasters, and this is just as sharp, albeit without the Seamaster dive extension. So a solid clasp, a comfortable bracelet, and a case we all know and love. If you're an Omega fan, you have to know and love the beveled and satin finished combo of the Speedmaster and Seamaster case as it's been rendered since the mid 60s. Polished flaring bevels, they thin out at the mid case and the flanks are sheer and longitudinally satin finished. You can see the pusher adjusters for the moon phase as well as the radial date. Yes, a moon watch and a Speedmaster professional at that with both a moon phase and a date. So it's both romantic and practical. You'll note that the cantilevered polished tachymeter is rendered in ceramic and its tachymeter frame is likewise polished with that characteristic cantilever overhang that we know and love from the moon watches. You will note the dial is sensational. This is not a traditional moon watch, sapphire crystal, not hesolite, and wonderfully box profiled to give you that off-axis distortion and bubble profile of the thermoplastic hesolite. So you get the look of a bubble acrylic with the scratch resistance of a sapphire. We'll get a little bit closer now and afford ourselves some more light because this dial warrants it. Aventurine or goldstone, glass mixed with copper elements, you create the image of the midnight blue cosmos, appropriate on a watch that is part of the moon watch continuity. This isn't about traveling to the moon, it's about the romance of the cosmos. It's about the dream of space flight. It's about the beauty of the great beyond. And I should say it features more than just goldstone, as there is a venturing about the main dial and thus the dominant theme of the dial, but you'll also note the metallic brushed finish of the chapter ring for the date, a small and gorgeous detail, the hands as well as the indices rendered in polished white gold. So you have a venturing for the dial base, which like enamel, will never tarnish, never oxidize or stain. It's completely impervious to light, UV radiation and moisture. And the same is true of the moon phase disc, which is also crafted of a venturing and in detail shows the same sparkling image of the cosmos and the dark blue color. Countersunk sub-registers for the tri-register chronograph. You will note there is a lunette style in indicator for the radial date, and it is a Speedmaster Professional. It's not just a moon watch, it's a moon watch from the professional continuity. And that professional kinship to the regular moon watch is due to the fact that they are mechanically related. This timepiece featuring the glorious caliber 1866, and let me see how close I can get and how well I can bring it into focus. It deserves to be as close as possible and as sharp as possible because I suspect this is one of the few Omega calibers you can buy that is not the Torbion and yet is hand finished. And I'll show you why I believe that. Okay. Getting close and getting detailed. 
the bevels of this caliber are mirrored and rounded. They have all appearances of a manually unglaged edge. They have the same look about the jewel countersinks with that mirrored finish perfectly rounded. The screw heads are black polished, the cap of the regulator on the balance black polished, and posts. Posts are a component that help to situate bridges. Uh, they're an undersold component of movement, construction, and finish. But for example, on the chronograph bridge, you can see the post head is likewise black polished. And that level of finish seems abnormal on a machine executed movement, so I do believe there is some hand finishing here. Cote de Genève perfectly aligned across the bridge, as you will note, straight grained finish about all the levers of the chronograph caliber, and you can see that the chronograph, a lateral clutch and cam operated arrangement, allows you to see everything. There are no secrets kept. You can even see the recentering action of the hammers on the hard cams at center. Manual wind, 48 hour power reserve, beats way at 21,600 vibrations per hour, like the Moonwatch caliber 1863 on which it's based and because it is based on the displayback moon watch caliber 18 joules manually adjusted and i believe manually finished to a degree one thing that sets this one apart is despite the fact that it has the look of the caliber 1863 from the sp standard moon watch it is water resistant to 100 meters making this one of the few speedmaster professionals you can actually take swimming you get to see everything for which you have paid and it is worth the price of admission sensational on both sides this is the omega speedmaster professional Moonwatch Aventurine. See it and make it yours on the watch box. And we're back with the Speedmaster Professional Moonwatch Aventurine. As you can see, midnight blue by day, beautiful azure blue by night, nicely loomed, highly legible. See it on the watch box.